Where we work has changed for so many of us, Work Positive Nation. Companies have persons distributed globally now. There's so many advantages to this redefinition of work because everyone wants to love where you work and love where you live, right? One of the challenges, though, is building a positive work culture while distributed globally. My guest today on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast can help you meet this challenge head on and conquer it using technology to your best advantage. And she's living this work life right now. She's the chief people officer at a Dallas-based company, AppSpace, and she lives in Tampa, Florida. She's here today to help us create a positive work culture, even and especially because of distributed teams. So let's listen, learn, and love our work on this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Welcome to the Work Positive Podcast with your host, executive coach and culture architect, Dr. Joey Fawcett. Discover strategies and tactics that work positive as Dr. Joey talks with industry leaders who create a positive work culture that attracts top talent and reduces team turnover. Discover how you can create a work positive culture that increases productivity and profits. Here's your host, Dr. Joey. Work Positive Nation, help me welcome to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast, my new best friend and soon to be yours, Holly Grogan. Holly, welcome to the Work Positive Podcast. Thanks for having me, Dr. Joey. It's great to be here. I am delighted to have you on. So, Holly, you do amazing things as the Chief People Officer of AppSpace.com. Now, Work Positive Nation, one of the things you're going to love about Holly is... She just doesn't talk about it. She lives it. In fact, Holly Grogan lives her mission. Tell us how you do that through AppSpace.com, Holly. Well, our mission at AppSpace is about connecting people, places, and the spaces in the workplace that they love. So as a company, that is what we do. That's the software that we deliver for our customers. And then we get to do that internally. One, we do use our software within AppSpace. Um, but we, Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? I've heard of that. We actually <laughs> use our own product, um, which, is, which is amazing. And we love it, right? Because we get to, we've gone through the whole journey of AppSpace within the organization. So it's a ton of fun. So honestly, it helps people really connect with the company because they see the results of their work. They get to use the results of what our engineers are building they get to test it out. They get to get feedback on it and all those things. So they get that connection, but then we're using it in the same spirit to create a workplace experience that people love. We're doing that as well. You know, oh, yeah, I space. love it. Yeah, because as I said in the introduction, we're global now. Our workforce is global, right? I know yeah. AppSpace lives this mission because it's a Dallas-based company and you're in Tampa. You got people working in Costa Rica. By the way, they're my new best friends too. I want to, to I work know. with them. Yeah, yeah, that must be a tough yeah. thing, really, to be in Costa Rica of all places. I know. So, how does the app space software work to allow the culture to permeate across miles and miles and miles of geography? Yeah, we are truly global. So, in addition to Dallas and Tampa and Costa Rica, we are in Europe, so we've got offices in the UK and Spain and Portugal, and then all the way over into APAC, and Malaysia and Australia as well. And we use the technology because um, the technology, you know, I mean, look, we all use the technology all day in work, right? Whether it's Teams or Slack and things like that, we're using ways to connect. But what AppSpace does is it's that workplace experience piece. So there's the digital side of that, of your digital workplace, and then there's the physical side of that. So on the physical side, we use it around when you are in one of our offices for space reservation, so I can reserve the space next to my friend who's also in the office. Mm -hmm. I can see the digital signs that have the announcements and those types of things and the information on room panels and those type, and, and, and that piece. So when I come into an office, I can connect with it. But for most of our team, which is a lot of other teams, that never actually go into that physical workspace. Yeah, exactly. That app space platform allows for all that communication, whether it's the water cooler talk or it's communication from your CEO or it's the latest safety information or whatever it may be, reach the worker. And mm -hmm. when, so the worker is in other companies and, or if you're an app space, the app spacer, and you can get that on your desktop or you can get that on your mobile. And so you're constantly connecting and you have this 
news feed that becomes tailored to you. So it knows oh. that what role you're in, so what information is important to you. It knows some of the other personal things that I like. If I'm in the um, health and fitness group or the recipe group or whatever I may have subscribed to, similar to a news feed like on your Instagram or something like that, you have that in your workplace. So I'm getting the relevant work information I need sprinkled in with some of the fun parts that I like about the business into that as well. So it's, it's really yeah. It is magical. So how do I get into that recipe group? Because I get hungry and I eat every evening. I know. Yeah. You just subscribe. It's very easy. It's one click and you're in. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And yeah. so this sets up within every company then, and it's getting me my work news and notices and message from the CEO, message from my boss, what have you, message from a coworker, but it's also getting me lifestyle things that I enjoy. Yeah. And each company is different. So mm -hmm. each company has different interest groups or whatever. You kind of make it, it's custom to whatever your organization is. And so in our group, we have, we do have recipes and we do have books, book clubs and things like that. Wow. Some of our other customers have probably some of the similar ones, right? Because we're all human and we have a lot of similar interests, but yeah, each company it's customized. And the beauty of those communities, like more of the lifestyle communities, as well as any like project work communities that you can have in there as well, is that it doesn't take an administrator to set it up. So wow. it doesn't have to come from that court that comes person or the people and culture team or whatever, an IT administrator or facilities administrator. If there's something that you're really, really interested in, like you love Yellow Labs, you can create a community for Labrador Retriever lovers and you can do that on your own and then people can see it and they can join in. So oh. it doesn't have to, it's, it's not top down communication, mm. it's more organic. And I think that's what kind of helps make that connection globally is that you're not just sitting there waiting for information to come to you. You're also participating in it. So mm. you're invested in it. Mm. So there's a dialogue that we're creating and I can initiate that dialogue if I so choose. Yeah. Yeah. So if I wanted to have left-handed brown eyed people, right. I yes. could set up a group for them. You could. We could talk that about would be a left handed uh, and brown eyed. I don't know how many people would be in that group, but <laughs> go for it. <laughs> I am brown eyed, but I'm right handed. I was just making stuff up there. So, yeah. I'm right handed as well. So if you want to start that group, <laughs> we know we got at least two people. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. So, Wow. I would say my hair is on fire, but I'll just say the top of my head is blowing off. There is an amazing culture opportunity here beyond the pale. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how do you see it working out in best cases? I think the best cases, and we've got great use cases with, with mm -hmm. some of our customers. One, I think, obviously, you've got to have a company that's committed to communication, transparency, and engagement within their teams. You've got to have, you've got to have those champions. Um, and so company and it doesn't have to be like the super culture forward company this is it's really it's easy for any company to do mm. um, but it's about getting people on onto the app which if you have relevant information people are there it's just like any other kind of almost i don't want to equate it to social media but i think if you're seeking out information and that is where the relevant information is you will go to it so mm. put relevant content there and people will go mm. Mm. So as a chief people officer for AppSpace, how do you attract top talent, Holly? Our biggest source of great people is, is referrals. Mm. When we look at the kind of the breakdown, I mean, look, we have an amazing talent acquisition team that does a really great job of mm. identifying people who are great to come and work at our company and they are really passionate about AppSpace. So they do a really good job of explaining who we are and getting people excited about the company. But most of our great talent comes from our referrals. So for us around attracting good talent, it's about making the people who are currently at AppSpace happy and loving where they are. That's my focus. It's focusing on the team that we have there and then greatness brings more greatness. So if we have great people, they're going to bring their other great friends because great people hang out with other great people. Yeah. And so that's really my focus is making sure that people love where they are so that they bring their, their, their best friends to come to work with them. Stick right? So yeah. 
how do you do that? How do you reduce team turnover? Because uh, that's just huge for most companies today. But there's no loyalty in the marketplace. People leave you over a dollar more, something like that. What is it that you do that makes the app space culture so appealing and attractive to top talent? Yeah, I think that there's a few different things. I think one, it helps that we're winning. We're a growing organization. We've got really great customers and we're delivering a really great product to them. And we're doing that successfully. So I think people always want to be a part of a winning team. And we talk about that a lot. Mm. We're able to talk about it in the marketplace and people are able to see it. So there's that, like people want to be involved in that. I think the other things is we have a high degree of flexibility and we are, whether you call us hybrid or remote, we do have some physical offices but most of our team is not in an office every day. It's really, if you're near an office, it's your choice if you're going to go in or not. I'm, we have a Tampa office and I'm near it. I go in a couple of days a week, but that I don't go in every day. And, but most of our people are remote. And so that gives a high degree of flexibility. And then within that, we still make sure that we are fostering. And I don't want to say a work-life balance because one, I think it's overused and I'm not really sure In today's world, with technology and everything else, that we have a work and this other personal life like that are in two separate buckets. They're intertwined now. Mm -hmm. And I think we do a lot to support that intertwinedness, if Mm. if that's a word. (laughs) It Um, is now. Meaning, yeah, obviously, we have customers to serve. We need to serve each other. And that's a priority for everybody. And I think that just comes from people who are, are driven and want to be successful, that they want to do those things. But then also allowing people the time that they need to participate in the rest of their life and to take care of the rest of their life. And that doesn't always happen before 8 a.m. in the morning and after 5 p.m. at night, Monday through Friday. Life Mm. happens all the time. Work leads into those other hours and personal life bleeds into the work hours. So creating flexibility around that, I think, helps. Uh, Because I think it shows care. I think it shows empathy. And I think that those are really great characteristics in a company and in leaders. And so we do a lot around that. So I think winning team, flexibility. And then I think the final thing that I would probably say keeps people at AppSpace is the opportunity to develop their in, in, within their careers. We are very big on pr- promoting within and giving people opportunities to try new things, whether that's switching complete career paths growing within their or their existing career we just had our what we call our steering committee which is like our senior leadership team in tampa for a couple of days we were doing a mid-year strategy check-in and i was looking around that room and half the people that are in that room were promoted into that room wow versus being hired into that room, Mm. which I think says a lot about people's career opportunities. Some people have been in the company for many, many years. Some within a few years have been promoted into more senior leadership roles. Mm -hmm. But that's something we look at. We look at mobility within the organization um, to make sure people have the opportunity to move around. I think that kind of gives people something new to do without leaving the company. Oh, I love it. I call it homegrown talent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I love my wife and I enjoy growing a few tomato plants. And in fact, we love them so much that we're expanding our vegetable (laughs) symphony. But man, they taste so much better, right? When they're right there from us because we can cultivate them the way that we enjoy eating them. And I just really think that homegrown talent within app space is so important because, Holly, hiring for culture fit is supreme. Mm -hmm. It sure is. It sure is. And that's the hard part, right? It's easy mm. to assess skills yeah. relatively. But if, if you compare it to culture and to fit and to leadership and those types of talents that, that people have, but it's something that we put a big emphasis on through our selection process. So we talked a little bit about attracting talent and for us, it is, it is, it is a lot of referrals, but we really focus on that selection process. We do a lot not just how we are looking at people, but how they are looking at us. We, it's very much that two-way street. And mm-hmm. so we do look for culture fit. And we've done some things that when I tell my friends, they are like, you did what? what? You know? <laughs> we had recently a, a vice president of product management, and we had some really great folks apply, some really top-notch people that had great, great skill set. 
And it came down to who do we want to work with? Who do we want to be on this team? Who can we think can lead that team? That's a critical role for a software company. Mm -hmm. And so we said, all right, let's do this. We knew that he was into mountain biking and running and things like that. So we said, all right, let's figure out a way we're going to see if we want to really play with this guy. So we invited him down and we played pickleball with him. And he's never played pickleball. Most of the people had never played pickleball, but we said, let's bring him down. Let's do a little <laughs> mini pickleball tournament to figure yeah. out like, how is this guy going to act in something he's never done before? Uh -huh. Joining App Space, he's never done that before. In a mixed team. So we had a bunch of our Tampa team members there, some executives, IT folks. We had a variety of different folks. And we said, come and play pickleball with us. He got the job. He did get the job. He didn't win at pickleball, but he got the job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no ace pickleball player, but he could play well with others. He is great at product management and he uh, is a great leader uh, and a great teammate. That's what we learned. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a nouveau way of doing it, but I absolutely love it. So has he gotten any better at pickleball or has he ever played? Any? No, no. And actually we, we took him to Kuala Lumpur to our office there where badminton is, is very big in Kuala Lumpur in right. Malaysia. He and he is a worse that? badminton player than he is a pickleball player. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> what is it about racket sports? The dude just, yeah. I guess, put him on a bike and he's at home. But yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe if you gave him roller skates to play badminton, maybe he'd. Do maybe, that. maybe that would, maybe he'd be better than. I don't know. Yeah. I love but it. But at this point, I've gotten used to beating him, so I'm. I'm <laughs> you, you like <laughs> it. You don't want him to get better. Uh, no competition there, right? <laughs> I absolutely love that. Well, you know, so often it seems like we get fixated on was he done as a product manager? What product lines has he managed or coder? What kind of coder is he? What yeah. products has he created for coding? But if it's somebody that you'd play pickleball with or somebody you'd have over for a dinner party or somebody you'd introduce to yeah. your friends, that just makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it, Holly? It does. It does. It does. It's you're going to be working with these people day in and day out. You're trusting them to lead a team and care for mm -hmm. important team members. And you want to make sure you pick the right person. Yeah. Yeah. And that's at a level you can't teach. You can train yeah. somebody certain skill sets, right? Yeah. Here's yeah. the way we roll at app space with project management. Da -da -da -da. Here are our systems. Ba -da 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 -da. But you can't teach the guy to be a gracious loser in pickle. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Holly Grogan is the Chief People Officer at AppSpace.com. That's the website, AppAppSpace.com. So go there right now, whether you're walking the dog on a peloton or doing or playing pickleball, right? And, and you're listening to this. Go there as soon as you can and check it out. Holly, what are some of the challenges of creating this kind of amazing work culture that you have at AppSpace? We talk about the global nature of things and honestly, quite honestly, the biggest challenge is the time zones. That mm. is, that's harder than any cultural differences because we're all human, right? It doesn't matter whether I live in Malaysia or I live in Spain or I live here in Tampa. There's some nuance to culture and, yeah. but there's, but at the end, fundamentally, we all can be happy. We can all can be sad. We all have just the basic human feelings. Mm -hmm. But having to be on a phone call at 9 p.m. because it's 9 a.m. for somebody else or vice versa. And and then now I've got to add in another time zone in, in Central Europe. And mm -hmm. that that's a complexity that makes it hard. Mm -hmm. We tried to overcome that. We tried to. We do it in a couple of different ways, but technology is the biggest thing. Creating avenues for people to work asynchronously, as well as to connect asynchronously. So some of the things we spoke about around mm -hmm. using app space creates a vehicle or a place that I can go and connect with my teammates, even when they're asleep. So having that tool, because I'm not going to be able to get on a Zoom call with them when it's not so convenient for all the different time zones. So creating a way for people to have connection asynchronously is a big part. Like that's, that's the everyday part. We do also, we bring people together within their regions and do regional town halls and team events and those kind of things. Our CEO and I, we do every year at the beginning of the year, we go and we 
we travel to all the different regions and the different locations and we do town halls where we talk about our strategy and we spend a lot of time just gathering feedback and those kind of things. And that kind of crafts what we're going to do from a people perspective is based on their feedback and how we can make things better for them. Mm. So what kinds of things do you talk about when you go on this world tour, App Space world tour? I know we need like concert shirts. That's the, what I'm thinking. We need some merch. That's what yeah. you need. Yeah. I know we need merch for sure. <laughs> the big kickoff is we do talk about our strategy in depth. We do that on a virtual session where we go through it high level. But then when we're there, we do go in depth and have give people the, the opportunity to ask questions about it. I'm mm-hmm. also do a lot around our, our product roadmap, those types of things. We set those to be about a 90 minute session. They usually end up going for several hours because people ask so many questions. People oh, are highly great. engaged which is really, really great. Mm -hmm. But then we do focus groups. So depending on the number of people we have, we're there for several days or we might be there for just a day or two. But we bring teams in and we say, how are we doing? What can we be doing better for you? What's getting in your way? What roadblocks can we remove? And we get tons of feedback. Mm -hmm. We get great feedback about things that are working as well. But we get a lot of ideas that mm. so I was doing this and it's working really well. Well, maybe we can replicate that in Portugal that's working well in Spain or what mm. have you. So we get a lot of feedback and then we also do some one-on-ones um, with people as well to get in depth if there's um, something that we really want to dig into. So we're there with open ears to listen and to learn. And I think when we first started doing it, people are a little bit kind of like, I don't know if I should say anything. <laughs> Really? Should I tell the CEO yeah. or the chief people officer that? I don't know. Uh, uh, and they said some things and we did some things in response to it. And then uh, year two, they were like, okay, all right, I'll talk. And then uh, year three, they're like, listen, come sit down with me. I got some <laughs> <laughs> So what you're talking about is the evolution of trust. Yes. I learned because this is unique, even though... <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to place a value judgment on it, but it's unique around, yeah. around companies that they are globally distributed and they do a world tour and they come and they say, hey, how's it going? What can you tell us? How can we improve? Yeah. What? I mean, that yeah. deer in the headlights look, as we'd like to say here in the South, right? It's, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. do what? You, you can't be serious. So you're really building a culture of trust as you ask their opinions. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of trust and a lot of transparency. Mm. I mean, there's, our, we, even on our virtual town halls, we have Q&A. You can ask the leaders anything. And we say anything. And, you know, my CEO jokes, and he and I worked together for uh, for 15 years now. I worked at prior companies together. And he's always like, oh, Holly's going to tell me I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is, Holly. <laughs> And I'm like, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned that much. <laughs> yeah, not that you can, right? Because he's going to say it. <laughs> That's amazing. So that level of transparency is rare air today. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think so. As I speak with others in business and people that sit in my roles, I know that sometimes they usually struggle with is to get transparency within the business. I feel fortunate. That yeah. is just kind of part of who we are here. So because that's rare air, transparency, authenticity, building of trust, what would you say to someone who's in a similar role to yours, chief people officer, HR leader, something like that? How could they begin to create that culture of trust and transparency and authenticity if there's not much of that currently? Yeah, it starts with that executive team. So I think that's where they've got to figure out if, it, if, the, if that executive team is open to it, then mm. the path is easy because then it's all about doing it, right? It, it's about having, going out, asking people and, and when they give you the feedback, taking the feedback, doing something about it and just do that over and over and over again. I think if you're struggling at a place where you have a leader, an executive leadership team that is not bought into the idea of transparency and trust, then there's certain things that you can do to figure out if you're going to get there. And if ultimately you have a CEO that's not going to do it, then maybe it's not the place for you. Yeah, it starts and stops right there in that chair, doesn't it? Sure does. <laughs> yeah. Sure does. But it's fascinating to me that when you ask the question, it's one thing in terms of, okay, we want it. We want your feedback. We want your honest feedback. Mm-hmm. We want you to be authentic and transparent, whatever. But Holly, come on now, if you just let it die right there, what have you done? You have, 
massively overdrawing your trust bank at that. Exactly. Point. Exactly. So what do you guys do at AppSpace to ensure that you act on what you're hearing? I track everything. Really? Wow. I take every comment after I take notes during the meetings. Uh -huh. I come back. I put it into a spreadsheet. So my flight home, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting really? it all into a flight home. And I'm saying, is this something we can do? Who needs to own it? How am I going to do it? And, and it's shared with my people and culture, the people and culture team and our executive team. And we're, I'm constantly checking in on that. And there's some things that we say, we're not going to be able to do that. And I go back to the person. I'm like, hey, sure. we're not going to be able to do that. And here's the reason why. Or in the meeting, I can tell them, I, I'm not going to be able to do that. And here's the reason why. I can tell them then and there if it's something that's really obvious. But if it, if it took me a little bit of research. Hmm. But I just check everything. That's amazing. And I make sure that we act on it. Hmm. Now you know Work Positive Nation why Holly Grogan is such an amazing Chief People Officer at AppSpace. That's an attention to detail and accountability that mm, is lacking in a lot of places today. But it also shows me the depth of care that you have for creating a positive work culture because these are people and they're stepping mm -hmm. out there to make this comment and you're honoring and respecting them by recording that and seeing to it that it's something you follow up on, even if you can't do it. Right. That's amazing, Holly. Holly Grogan is the Chief People Officer at AppSpace. Go right now to AppSpace.com. Holly, when we go there, what are we going to see? Oh, you're going to see all kinds of great stuff. So I think you get a really good flavor of what AppSpace can do for your organization. It is about creating a great workplace experience. So it's bringing, as I said, the digital and the physical workplace together through communication. So you'll see all the different types of solutions we have there from our intranet, our employee app, space reservation, visitor management. We've got it all there, anything that you need to create a great, great workplace for your environment, for your employees. Now, is there a tab there in case I've heard you describe this amazing work culture and I want to check out opportunities? Absolutely. At the top, click that careers button. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. Holly Grogan, CPO for AppSpace.com. What, what is your one thing? Work Positive Nation always wants to know, hey, Dr. Joey, make sure you ask them, what's the one thing that they can do starting today to create a positive work culture? So Holly Grogan, what's your one thing? I think for me, it's, it's be mission driven. And it's, I say that for a couple of reasons. I think it gives people something to strive for and people mm -hmm. want to, something to go for. They want that goal. And so it creates a winning team. They have the mission, they're going to go for it, they're going to win. If you have a winning team, then you have a profitable company and you can give back to your team members who then can have a mission and drive and create profit. And it, it, it's, a, it's a circular piece, so I think to be mission driven is critical. Mm, lather, rinse, repeat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And when I am connected in my personal mission to the company mission, then I really belong to the company and I am loyal and want to make the company grow and do better. That's amazing. Holly Grogan is the chief people officer for appspace.com. Go there right now. Uh, go to work with Holly. Uh, tell her that you heard this on Work Positive Podcast and because your culture is so amazing. Holly, I've learned a lot from you today. I know that Work Positive Nation has. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for having me. It's great fun. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Work Positive Podcast. Please share this podcast with your friends who are HR and small business leaders so they can do one thing today to create a positive work culture that increases productivity and profits. I'd like to give you a free work positive course just for listening. It's called Something to Talk About, and it's transformed the work conversations of so many people all over the world. Get your free copy when you go to workpositive.today slash something to talk about, and you can start transforming your conversations today. Remember, it pays to work positive.